it is good to have you join me again on another episode of Service to Humanity as we bring you up to date with what the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development is involved in. The program also makes room to highlight events of agencies under the Ministry as they all work together to provide relief to those affected by humanitarian crisis, natural or man-made disasters as well as social problems. My name is Habib Zoksok and I will be back with details of our package after this short break. Please stay tuned. Across the six geopolitical zones. To use this money uh, for what it is meant for, especially to take care of their family. In 36 states and the FCT. <laughs> over 6.4 million of Nigerians poorest of the poor in about 1.3 million households receive conditional cash transfers of 5,000 Naira monthly under the Household Upliftment Program of the federal government. Their joy knows no bounds. The government is very well because they do well. Help me to do any other thing, my family. Reducing absolute poverty, promoting shared prosperity through the conditional cash transfer initiative. The Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in service to humanity. Service to humanity starts with news from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs disaster management and social development. Let's get highlights of recent events in our management diary. The Honorable Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, has promised support for local producers of assistive devices for persons with disabilities. This is with the objective of ensuring that millions of them enjoy the right of independent living. The minister disclosed this at the opening ceremony of a three-day capacity building workshop for identified local producers of assistive technologies which held in Makodi, Benway State. She was represented at the event by the Director of Special Needs of the Ministry, Mrs. Onwikwe Florence Nkechi, who urged the state governments to support Nigerians and local fabricators of mobility aids, devices and assistive technologies. This, she said, will cut down the cost of importation of such devices and encourage local producers to develop and improve on the quality of their production. The minister further revealed that the humanitarian ministry was working in collaboration with partners to nurture and harness the potentials of PWDs, urging participants to maximize the opportunity and utilize efficiently the little support that would be provided at the end of the training. She said the federal government through the ministry remains committed to doing its best to cater for PWDs. The National Social Investment Programs, NSIPs, has a comprehensive structure in place that ensures transparency and inclusiveness at all levels so that Nigerians everywhere can have confidence in the program. Implemented in, in a National Coordinator of the NSIPs, Dr. Umar Binder, made this known in an interview where he explained the various levels of checks that the programs go through. It is the state governor that actually appoints the coordinator. We didn't say we are imposing anybody. And all the appointment of the program officers are transparently done. We advertise, they subscribe, they are interviewed before they are hired. We display a lot of data to ensure that we are transparent. And we deploy a lot of energy into monitoring, evaluation and impact assessment to ensure that we get better with data and evidence. We have 109 senators, three per state and one in the FCT here. We have 360 members of the House of Representatives and these are people who are representing people in local governments. They have constituencies. So if you are working with them, you are working with Nigeria. And this ministry is leaving no stone unturned to ensure that we work very, very closely with the lawmakers. Dr. Bindu disclosed that trained independent monitors are also used to ensure transparency and proper implementation of the programs. He, however, explained that the independent monitors are not really independent as the name implies. In each state, still, the focal person and the structure of the program, plus the state government from National Orientation Agency, Bureau of Statistics, are all involved to ensure that these people, they go and they are seen, they are collecting data and they are reporting back. In fact, most of them carry tablets 
So on the tablets there is a pre-designed form and you are expected to now send back your reply or your data every single day at the end of the So literally we have a central uh, uh, situation um, office in Abuja here, but then they collect information from the states. So it's literally, literally like a round robin. It is a peer review mechanism. You are never alone. And, uh, uh, and that is the monitoring of monitoring uh, strategy that were pl planted with the independent monitors. and to provide any support at any moment as needed. Welcome back from that short break. NPAR is now a household name. It represents the efforts of this administration to empower young people between the ages of 18 and 35 by giving them employment, training and monthly stipends to set them on the path to being gainfully employed when they exit the scheme after two years. Mr. Nsikak Okon is the national coordinator of the Empower program in Nigeria. We had a chat with him recently where he said quite a lot about the scheme. Let's hear him just as we take a brief review of the Empower program. Don't go away. Empower is a scheme set up by the administration of President Muhammad Buhari in 2016 to address unemployment amongst Nigerian youths between the ages of 18 to 35. It provides a structure for, amongst other things, large scale skill acquisition and development and to ensure that each participant will learn and practice what is necessary to create or find work. Since its inception in 2016, two batches A and B numbering about 500,000 beneficiaries have successfully gone through the two-year program. The NPower program coordinator, Mr. Nsikak Okon, speaks more on the NPower scheme. We term this to be the largest employment, I mean, employment strategy in the whole of Africa. That has never happened in any other African uh, country. That 500,000 Nigerian youths were employed in w almost one fell swoop. So, uh, and it's not on, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't stop there. It's not, it's not only for the Nigerian uh, graduates. We've had the, the, the unemployed youth in the undergraduate or non-graduate, we call the non-graduate components of the program. Well, over 50,000 of them are also employed uh, in different schemes. The NPOWER has various clusters to accommodate both graduate and non-graduate beneficiaries so that young Nigerians, irrespective of their qualifications, have a chance to participate. Okay. Uh, in the graduate component, let, let me start with the graduate component. In the graduate component, we have 
three major uh, schemes or components of the program. We have those for teach, what we call in teach. We have those for uh, agri, what we call in agro. Those for the health, we call them in health uh, volunteers. For the teach, we deploy them to uh, government schools, primary schools, especially is, is, is in the primary schools, primary one to primary three. Then for the, uh, for the NAGRO, we deploy them to federal government owned agri, uh, agri uh, development centers. And then the same thing is applicable to the health, where we employ, uh, deploy them to uh, national primary health care development agencies cut across all the 36 states and FCT. So there's no state, there's no local government that will not have an empower volunteer, whether it's in the graduate component or the non-graduate com component. Uh, the same thing happens to the non-graduates. In the non-graduates, we have what we call the NBUILD, where we, uh, where we teach them the rudiments of artisan, artisanship. For instance, carpenters, masonries, uh, plumbers, uh, electrical installers, agri technicians. So we teach them and in hospitality as well. So we in imparting these skills to young Nigerians, Empower is in partnership with skills councils like the Council of Registered Builders of Nigeria, Corbon, National Automotive Design and Development Council, National Institute for Hospitality and Tourism, and Institute of Trading and Portfolio Management. Desire to improve cohesion. In March 2021, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development flat off the registration of Batch C beneficiaries. This was after the approval by President Muhammad Buhari that NPower beneficiaries be increased to 1 million. As the Minister said during the launch, registration and selection of beneficiaries will be seamless and without fear or favour. To ensure transparency, institutional memory, and dynamic impact assessment of the NPAR cluster, it will now be administered through the National Social Investment and Information Management System, NASINS, designed to optimize and complement the structural reforms of social investment programs and other activities of the ministry with the systemic use of ICT tools for coordination, administration, monitoring and stakeholder management across the entire process and value chain of all social investment programs under the purview of the ministry. Mr. Insikak Okon explains that NPower scheme had a system for monitoring beneficiaries that is not limited to the headquarters alone, all of which is to ensure the scheme has the desired impact. We, we had what we call independent monitors. Independent monitors, 3,000 of them nationwide. They go in each of the states. We had, a, 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 we have selected what we call independent monitors, and not only uh, with independent monitors, we we had partnership with the, the, the DSS, we had partnership with ICPC, we had partnership with uh, the councils, Coburn, uh, NADDC, and then we had even uh, Action Aid also contributed in the monitoring of these uh, empower volunteers. So it was all an all inclusive uh, monitoring. Uh, uh, component. It was not only handled by the national headquarters, it was handled at the state level whereby we had these independent monitors, 3,000 of them cut across all the taxes there. Like the NPAR coordinator says, the scheme has quite an impact in job creation across federal, state, local government and ward levels. I can bet you there's no ward in Nigeria that will not have an NPAR youth, an NPAR beneficiary. So what, what I'm trying to, to, to illustrate here is that uh, it has trickled down to that, to that level. You can imagine the, uh, every month, the 500,000 beneficiaries that we had as at the Baj A and Baj B, every month got almost 15 billion naira. 30,000 naira times 500,000 uh, of them. It's, 30, I mean, it's 15 billion naira a month. So every month, you can, you can imagine what trickles down to the, to the grassroots. So a whole lot of, there are testimonies everywhere. That without Empower, we, uh, I wouldn't have done this. Without Empower, I wouldn't have gotten married. In short, most of the beneficiaries from the program, they even got, let me not say most, a, a percentage of the beneficiaries, over 109,000 of them, they have series of testimonies to portray that they have ent entered into this program. And then their life have changed over this uh, number of years that they have. 
Like Mr. Insikak Okon said, the impact of NPAR has been felt in every ward and local government in Nigeria. Our crew went to town and found Abubakar Usman, an indigent of Niger State, who is residing in Kaduna State. As an Empire Batch A beneficiary, he couldn't agree more. He has a story to tell. Abubakar Usman is into farming. He planted and harvested maize and cowpeas, which he sold in the market. What many would not know is that Abubakar is a beneficiary of the Empower program of the federal government. He got enrolled in the year 2018-2019. He speaks on how he became a beneficiary of the Empower. I got to know about Empower while I was working at a bank. So I was a marketer with a bank and I saw the advert being an internet savvy then. So when I got to the website, I applied and we followed due process of the application and selection process. You apply after application, then you take a test, then after the test, we were selected without knowing anybody. Abubakar speaks on how the end power helped him realize his passion in farming, amongst other things. I was saving from my end power stipend. So I was saving part of it. So when I get when the season for farming started, I already know that I want to go into the farming. That's why I had to register my company to so kind of ginger me, and I make it even farm-related name that I gave it. That's why I call it I call it Farm Innovation Enterprise. So after the registration, I went and lease a land from my proceed, from the saving I have from my end power. And I acquired the land, start uh, doing the, working on the farm, which still with my end power stipend. So then. How would you say end power has helped you? Abu Bakr says end power has given him the security to pursue his passion, advising other young Nigerians to take advantage of the scheme to invest in their passion. It has helped me a lot because it's given me safe, uh, it's given me security, so to say, because it's given me other pl uh, opportunity to venture into other aspects. For example, during when they gave us our tab, being an internet savvy, I used that same tab the Empower gave me to work for all these companies, all these multinational companies that are looking for people that work from home. So I can remember the first job I did uh, was in 2018-17 with my NPAL and I got about uh, $300 then working with the tap. So you see <laughs> the NPAL <Empower> actually <laughs> empowered me a lot. What I will say to the Nigerian youth is you know as you are growing up you are always told to follow your passion. But when you, have, when you have grown and become, you, are, you have reached that adult school stage, you no longer follow your passion. Try and invest in your passion because that is what will take you somewhere. Quite inspiring if you ask me, and so much for young people to learn from. Empower Batch C is in the process and more young Nigerians are hoping to be brought on board. If they borrow a lift from Abubakar, we would have more entrepreneurs and the edge will be taken off unemployment in Nigeria. We are appreciating the minister. She has deemed it fit to see our inside but not outside. Out of disability, there is ability. Out of ability, there is creativity. I'm happy and I thank the ministry for coming here to assist us, and especially with the food stuff. May God bless all your staff and God bless Nigeria. The Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs 
disaster management and social development in service to humanity. The program is Service to Humanity. One of the agencies under the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development is the Northeast Development Commission. Its mission includes leading the reconstruction and development of the Northeast region in the wake of the Boko Haram insurgency in the region. In carrying out its mandate, the Commission has embarked on quite a number of activities which we will do our best to update you on. In our last segment coming up next, we will bring you one of its events for last year, where 120 utility vehicles were given to security agencies working in the region amongst other events. Let's take highlights of this event. The Northeast Development Commission, NADC, has a mandate, among other things, to receive and manage funds from allocation of the federal account and international donors for the settlement, rehabilitation and reconstruction of roads, houses and business premises of victims of insurgency, as well as tackling menace of poverty, illiteracy level, ecological problems, and any other related environmental or developmental challenges in the Northeast states. In carrying out its mandate, the Commission has been involved in a lot of activities which include training and manpower development, support for distressed communities, as well as for security agencies containing the crisis in the Northeast. Under this intervention, the armed forces received 70 vehicles, the police got 30 vehicles, Department of State Security 10 vehicles, and the National Security and Civil Defense Corps gets 10 vehicles. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. And I think in a ceremony before the formal handover, and which was chaired by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Haji Asadia Umar Farouk, said the donation is one of government's efforts towards rebuilding the northeast region. She said all hands must be on deck if there must be any meaningful development in the region. The restoration of peace and stability in the Northeast region is one of the cardinal objectives of President Muhammad Buhari's administration. The devastation caused by the Boko Haram crisis in the Northeast, which started over 10 years ago, is colossal. Hence, we need to put enormous efforts in place for early recovery, rebuilding, the settlement, peace building, and long term development of this very important region. The effort in returning the region to normal will not be over uh, emphasized. In an earlier welcome address, Mohammed Goni Al Ali spoke on the mandate of the NADC and the purpose for the intervention. Recognizing the importance of security peace and stability in the region in the discharge of our function across the Northern region and respond to requests for support made to the Commission by the armed forces. The Governing Board of the Commission approved the provision of non kinetic logistic support to the various forces at appropriate. We are gathered here today to witness official party cover of logistic operational vehicles and other items. Your Excellencies, Ladies and gentlemen, it is our belief that this donation will go a long way in supplementing the effort of the armed forces in overcoming rebelling security challenges and achieving lasting peace and stability in the nurses. Stakeholders on their part took turns to commend the efforts of the ministry and use the opportunity to call on agencies and organizations to support the fight against insurgency as well as the restoration and development of the northeast region. The resurgence of terrorist activities in the northeast, after several years of relative love, has put the military and other security outfits in the region in a difficult situation for many reasons. And any assistance from any quarter of the Nigerian state, such as what the Northeast Development Commission has embarked on today, is most welcome. Other items handed over during the special intervention included one ambulance each for the eight tertiary hospitals in the Northeast, 30 hospital beds each for the eight tertiary hospitals, and one solar fridge each.
on that note, we wrap up this edition of Service to Humanity. Join me again same time next week for another episode of the program. Until then, enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>